Prairie Folk. I'm a Republican candidate for state rep in Simsbury. I wanted to just stop by and give you some information on my candidacy. Sure. This is my palm card. On the bottom I have my website which has a lot of information and on the back I have some um, things that I've done in Simsbury. So, mm -hmm. But there's more on the website. I am also on the emergency management team in town and so I wanted to give out the latest emergency preparedness guide because as you know October's coming and we mm -hmm. went through something last year yes. so I want you to have that as well. Well thank you. Thank You're you. welcome. I do know you're the director at the chamber. That's correct. Yeah. I, yep, I've been there for 20 years and I just feel I'm, it's time and I'm qualified to go down to the state capitol. Well I'll tell you something, the business really needs a voice today and that's I think as a small business person myself you feel like we don't have any more representation. Well that's one of my goals for getting down to the state capitol because I feel the same way that they're not listening to small business. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we're over regulated, we're over mandated, and we can't fix the problems by tax, taxing small business. You know, it's a small business that creates the jobs, not the government. That's right. It's also, we're totally out of balance as well, too. There's, you know, it's democratically ruled, democratically controlled at the state legislature, democratic governor, and so I really think that we need to put more Republicans at the state legislature so we can balance out, have some compromise and debate. Yeah, it makes sense. Yeah. We're also spending ourselves, you know, to oblivion. We, you know, we're spending way more than we make and so I feel that's another important reason to run. Yeah, well, you know, right now you feel like you're sending the bill to my kids. That's correct. As we spend. Yeah, and probably in your kids' kids too. Right. So I just feel it's time and uh, I'm ready, I'm qualified and I want to go down and represent Simsbury and our business community. But I really appreciate your time, and I hope you think of me in November. Great. Perhaps I can put a lawn sign out for sure. the election. That'd be, be great. Glad to do it. Yeah, great. Thanks for your time. Uh, thank nice you. to meet you. Thank okay. You. I'm Charity Folk, Republican candidate for state representative in Simsbury. In November 2011, I announced to my husband, Mike, that I was going to run for state representative in Simsbury. Mike knows me very well, and although I took him by surprise, he has encouraged me from day one as someone who knew firsthand the issues of running a small business, who understood the challenges in Hartford, who had the drive and determination to get the Republican endorsement, and more importantly, to win this November. I've lived in Simsbury since 1983, raised two daughters through the very fine Simsbury school system, and have been an active and enthusiastic contributor to our community. As a first-time candidate, I've enjoyed the many, many new experiences of running for office for the first time, starting from the excitement of winning my party's endorsement, my first acceptance speech, Fundraising, not so much fun, but I was honored and pleased with the support I received early on to meet my goal. I have been all over the town of Simsbury, knocking on doors, meeting voters at Septemberfest and the Home Improvement Show, at house parties, the Farmer's Market, and Talcott Music Festival. I stood at the polls during both the presidential and recent primaries and have been warmly embraced by the residents in Simsbury. I've spent weeks on the phone with Simsbury voters listening to you about your issues and concerns for our future and advice on how to run for office. These are wonderful memories for my first campaign and now I want your vote to provide me with the memory of winning on November 6th. But now let me tell you the reasons why I'm running. And I have three key messages which you may have already seen on my campaign literature. My first key message is simple math spend no more than you make. And this is pretty simple. How many of you listening at home know what happens when you start to spend more than you're bringing in, when your income doesn't meet your expenses? I don't know about you, but the first thing I do is cut back. I made sure I'm covered for my family's health, safety, and welfare, and look to those purchases that I should save up for before buying or cut out altogether. It's worked very well for me in good times and bad throughout my entire life. Our state is on a spending spree and is about to hand the bill to our children. And if I'm not mistaken, 
This is the very lesson we try to teach our kids, spend no more than you make. Connecticut is not setting a very good example. We need to control state spending and balance our fiscal budget. Despite the largest tax increase in the state's his history, this fiscal year's budget has a deficit of millions of dollars. This is not what we were promised when shared sacrifice was asked of all of us. This makes me mad. I pay my taxes, I contribute to my community, and I balance my own budget. I deserve better for my state government. I want you to send me to Hartford so that I can do what I can to put a stop to this. Yes, I'm one person, but that's how we begin to make the change. My second key message is balance in our state legislature. We need to end the days of one party rule. I believe that party balance fosters compromise and debate. I'm proud to live in a country where we can agree to disagree, have meaningful discourse, listen to opposing positions, and look for ways to work together for a common solution. This is how I've managed my 20 years in the Simsbury Chamber, facilitating debate and compromise to find solutions that satisfy our very diverse membership. I've worked with 20 different boards of directors. We've had difficult issues to resolve over the years with many different points of view and have prided ourselves on working out the best resolution for our membership. This philosophy appears to be non-existent in Hartford. We need to change the makeup of our state legislature to strengthen the value of communication and compromise, not reinforce the status quo. And yes, I'm one person, but that's how we begin to make change. We need to balance our legislature, and you need to send me as the Republican state rep representative from Simsbury. My third key message is I'm a strong advocate for our local business. Small businesses are the ones who support our community and are the job creators, not government. Small business is not a special interest. Small business represents your friends, neighbors, our coaches and teachers. They own our grocery stores and gift shops and restaurants. Our local businesses are the first ones our community groups go to to support our local causes to help reach their fundraising goals, to support dreams like Palmetto Park or provide recycling at events, to buy an ad in a Little League booklet or community theater program. They honor our veterans by providing the funding to hang flags along Hot Meadow Street or so to support social services and programs at the Senior Center. They support Simsbury Celebrate, Septemberfest, and the Home Improvement Show. Our local business is the backbone of our community. They hire our children, share in the burden of taxes, they volunteer. These are the volunteers that help clean up the river, work a ticket booth or march in our local parades. They unfailingly support our schools, churches, and synagogues. If this is a special interest, I will be proud to fight for our Simsbury businesses at the state legislature. We have overregulated and overtaxed our businesses enough. Years of overspending, bloated government, and budget gimmicks have created enduring budget deficits. Every time it's the Connecticut taxpayer and small business owner that are forced to bail out government. There needs to be a cultural change in Hartford. It's time to spot, stop out of control spending and stand up for our small business. Connecticut is now ranked 44th in business friendliness. Let's make changing this ranking a top priority and start by looking at ways to reduce regulation and taxes for our Connecticut businesses. How about making Connecticut number one place to own a business? I'm the candidate with over 20 years of running a small business, managing budgets, staff, and working with boards of directors and hundreds of member companies who are my customers. Under my management, the Simsbury Chamber is fiscally sound and a respected, proven leader of chambers in the Hartford region. Let's talk about special interests for a minute. I intend to represent a lot of special interests besides our business community, the town of Simsbury, our great education system, and the natural characteristics and scenic beauty of our town. Two of our kids, Ethan and Alexandra, are in state universities, and Andrew may be following soon. Yes, my husband Mike will have three children in college at one time. No easy task. 
We are so fortunate to have a strong state university system. It has served our blended family very well. Mike and I want to be sure that our children's children have the same opportunity to go to quality state schools. I intend to make this a special interest. I was also an Air Force brat in my very early years. I was born in Norman, Oklahoma, along with my sister Hope, while Dad was in the service earning a degree at the University of Oklahoma. And yes, Mom's name was Faith, so we have Faith, Hope, and Charity in the family. I also have a brother named David. During World War II, my dad, Bill Power, was in the 301st Bomb Group in Europe and the pilot of the B-17 Flying Fortress. His plane was shot down over the Italian Alps. He was captured and held prisoner in a Nazi POW camp for 18 months. For many months, he was listed missing in action. Dad came home with a Purple Heart, married Mom shortly thereafter, started a family in Fairfield, and eventually became a partner in the accounting firm of Touche Ross. He instilled in us honor, family, patriotism, and self-reliance. I intend to honor my dad and our veterans with my special interest. I've been working my entire life. I wanted to make my own way, whether it was babysitting, working in fast foods, or factories. I had part-time jobs in college and when my kids were small, and a full-time job for the past 20 years. I'm now at the age where I can begin to collect my Social Security if I choose. So let me be clear. My very special interest is me and other seniors who are being bombarded daily with the threats of reducing our Social Security. But it's clear our system is broken. You know, we need to find a fix, but not on the backs of those of us who have been paying into the system for our entire working lives. I, for one, intend to fight to keep that from happening. This program is also an opportunity to say thank you to all those who have helped me and supported my campaign in so many ways and who have written letters to the editors, made phone calls and contributions, opened their doors to me, hosted parties and put out lawn signs, and delivered literature to your homes. But I still need your help and I can't do this alone. I now ask for your vote on November 6th Please reach out to me either by phone or email through my website at charityforsimsbury.com. I look forward to hearing from you and to representing you at the state capitol. I'm Charity Folk, I'm running for state representative, and I approve this message. How are you? Security, I'm fine. How are you? We're, here we are at the Simsbury Farmer's Market. I'm going to take my glasses off so you can see me. Gorgeous and eyes. Thank you so much. <laughs> um, it's a beautiful August day. Oh, it's beautiful. Beautiful gorgeous, that day. Gorgeous. And I'm out here doing Hate a little... see the summer go so fast. I hear you. <laughs> I'm out here doing a little campaigning and talking to Simsbury voters to find out what's on their mind. Can you tell me what's the number one issue uh, facing voters today in the state of Connecticut? What do you think is tops? Well, I think at the top is really about jobs, because we really need to have jobs here. And not just jobs for everybody, it's jobs for the young people. Uh, the economy. In what sense? Uh, there's no consideration for people that are trying to run businesses. It seems like uh, the economy is run by bureaucrats and politicians rather than by businesses. And individuals. So you feel maybe the state legislature doesn't have enough business experience and needs to bring that to Hartford? Yeah, absolutely. I would definitely be uh, in support of somebody that uh, could could be a voice for the business for right. businesses in uh, the legislature. Yeah. The biggest problem we have is one party government in Connecticut, and that party uh, ignores the other party in terms of bills and regulations that uh, should be passed and should not be passed. 
So we need more balance is what you're saying. We need to, we are uh, controlled by a Democrat at the state legislature and by our governor. And so we need a little more balance down there, More put more Republicans in there for compromise and debate? Yes, absolutely. We need more balance and we need more statesmanship. Uh -huh. And we don't have that. Hi, we're still here at the farmer's market on a beautiful August day, um, right here at Simsmore Square. And I have with me Angela Competti, who was one of my great volunteers who's been helping me with my campaign. Um, Angela owns a small business. So Angela, how is it going in the state of Connecticut? How does it feel to be a small business owner right now? Are you facing any challenges? I am facing some challenges. Um, I feel that we're overregulated. I feel that we're overtaxed. Um, with unemployment sky high, yeah. I'm unable to even hire people when I want workers because um, the unemployment keeps getting extended, yep. which is making it so people rather stay unemployed right. than come and work for me. And, and I have the jobs, I have the money to pay people, but they just don't want to work because they're collecting. Yep. So that's one of my biggest my biggest concerns. What is it that you do? Tell everybody, you know, what is your business? <laughs> um, I, I own a, a cleaning company out uh, in West Simsbury, First yeah. Class Housekeeping, and we do Farmington Valley and uh, Litchfield County. Yeah. How long have you had your business? Since 2005. Yeah. And so you're struggling now with the overregulation. Yeah. Pa Tax. How about paperwork, pa taxes? Paperwork is unbelievable. I mean, every quarter mm -hmm. you have to fill out, file all these paperwork for every employee. It's I have to send all this stuff to my accountant because I can't even, you know, right. I can't even keep up with it all. So, so that's just, an added expense, it just is. hiring somebody else to help you. It is. Yeah. Well, I appreciate your time today. Thank Angela's you. here. Maybe, Angela, you could turn around for one moment and show everybody. Isn't that great? Thanks, Angela. Thank you. Thank you. We're here at September Fest. It's Friday night. We're just about to open. It's around five o'clock. And with me is Greg Piazzu, and he is the secretary of the Simsbury Republican Town Committee. He's here with me tonight, and Senator Whitcoast is by our side over here. We'll get to talk to him in a minute. Hi, Greg. Hey, Charity. How are you? How's, the, how's the campaign trail going? Everything's going really good. And, uh, you know, this is the first time I've actually been in a booth. Normally, I'm helping set up September Fest, so this is kind of new for me, and I'll be here all weekend. So, Greg, let's, let's talk a little bit about what's going on in the state, you know, how you feel about some of the decisions that, ha that have been made, and maybe what you might do to make some changes. What would you do? Well, I think that we've seen pretty much what we predicted two years ago, which yeah. is uh, two years ago we had one party rule in the legislature, overwhelming one party majorities in both houses of the General Assembly. And two years ago we added, as the icing on the top of that cake, a Democratic governor who's passing all those bills, ratifying yeah. them, and we've seen the biggest income tax increase in state history. We've seen boondoggles like millions, hundreds and hundreds of millions of dollars for busways to nowhere. Right. First five giving away taxpayer dollars to companies that don't need the money. Yeah. Everything is just simply out of whack, and it, right. it really comes down to a lack of balance, not only between political parties, but lack of balance between the choices we're making between spending and, and taxation. Yeah, I hear you. So, and that seems to be the number one um, issue, or that's really high up there when I go out and knock on voters' doors or talk to them on the phone, that we need to figure out a way to get the spending under control. So, any ideas, what would you do? Well, um, I think we need to understand that we don't have a revenue problem in this state. We have a spending problem in this state. We are addicted to spending. If you take a look at the state's population over the last 20 years, our, our population's grown single digits, uh, but uh, our spending is, has doubled and tripled in that time. So uh, I think that's what we need to recognize. And I think once we actually get a vibrant two-party system back in the state of Connecticut, we're going to have that kind of dialogue and compromise that's, I think, going to reset the focus right. of a balance between taxation and spending. Yeah. yeah. And, and I agree. That's one of the reasons I'm running, that we need to have more Republicans uh, at the state legislature so that we do have some compromise and we do have some debate. So, Greg, thanks a lot. So we're here at Septemberfest, and I have with me a, a, a face that people will remember from Septemberfest. I have Connie Mason. Hi, Connie. Hi, Charity. We go way, way, way back with Septemberfest. As a matter of fact, I can see the lasagna family clowns, and I think 
You're the one that originally found them. Yes, I am, and I've talked to them tonight. They are thrilled to be back. Oh, that's great. They are thrilled. Yeah. The um, Connie was in charge of the entertainment for Septemberfest for I don't know how many years, but if you were to go a back, lot. yeah, a lot. Yeah, and some of the uh, acts and some of the uh, bands are still here with the new what I call the new Septemberfest at the Meadows. Yes, correct. And it's that was part of the fun of finding new bands and also bringing back the old time favorites and trying to fit fit it all together. It yeah. was not easy, but it was a heck of a lot of fun. Yeah. So what, what do you think of uh, the new uh, Septemberfest at the Meadows? It's a great spa place for it, isn't it great? Oh, the spot is great. Um, it it just, I, I'm having trouble connecting the two because of where we had yeah. it and versus here, but this is fabulous. Yeah, it is. It's fabulous, and it's grown from last year, the first yeah. event, first Septemberfest here last year run by the town. Yeah. It's yeah. grown more this year, and it's wonderful. Yeah. So it's great. So thanks, Connie, for being here. We're sort of reminiscing of what we call the old September Fest and the new. So thanks a lot. Thank You're you. Welcome. Okay. I have Paul Hanault with me, who is chairman of the Board of Finance in town and also on the Simsbury Republican Town Committee. Welcome, Paul. Thanks, Charity. Thanks we, for being here, for having me here. Yeah. Oh, great. Um, one of the things I've been asking some of the uh, visitors for at September Fest is, what do you think is the number one issue you think the state is facing? What What's the number one for you? I think it's number one is the uh, debt load that the state's carrying. Mm -hmm. It's just uh, enormous and not uh, enough is being done to address that. If you uh, could do one thing or give one piece of advice, what would you give? What would you tell the state legislature, let's say? It would be don't spend uh, more than you take in. That would be the big thing right there. <laughs> I think the most critical issue is the uh, tax climate for families in Connecticut and Simsbury yeah. where the government needs a plan. The Democratic controlled legislature needs to be open to different ideas to have a more affordable tax plan to grow businesses in the state. And also you need to look at the income tax. You need to look at the, the exodus of people, particularly young people, you know, so right. there needs to be a, an overall sense of how we're right. forming our tax policy to attract people. So it wouldn't be a bad idea maybe to uh, lower maybe our income tax or uh, our uh, capital gains tax or, you know, people are leaving because of that. Yeah, it's really an across the board perspective and we need more Republican voices and we need more people who are friendly to the small business person. Well, I think a lot of people are concerned about the way the state is spending their money, yeah. how we're leaving debt for our children and our grandchildren, yeah. and they don't see any sense of improvement. Um, you know, the, the reckless spending by this governor and the one-party rule in Hartford is really just destroying our, our economy here in Connecticut, and there's no sign that it's about to change. Yeah. And, you know, if anybody watched the Democratic National Convention over uh, this past few nights, uh, Governor Malloy was one of the speakers, and he's just carrying the playbook that President Obama is claiming. It's spend, 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 but he's spending taxpayers' money without any return. When I get down there, Kevin, we're going to be working on the state budget. Won't that be fun? That would be excellent. You know, we need more people <laughs> like you in the state legislature to help the Republican Party to equalize uh, yeah. state government. You know, it's been over 20 years since the Republicans have controlled one chamber, and that was the only year that we had true reform in Hartford. If you talk to a Democrat or you talk to Governor Malloy, he'll talk about how he inherited this problem. But we have to remind, our job is to remind the voters that the problem was because of a Democratic budget that not one single Republican voted for, not even Governor Rell. Right, and you know, I'm, it's, at some point you gotta stop doing the blame game. You just have to go in there and say, you know, whether I inherited it or not, it's now mine. I ran for it, I wanted it, I'm here, and you have to take responsibility. Well, I hear you, Kevin. We get, we're trying to get the message out. That's why we're here tonight at Septemberfest. We want to remind everybody the big day is November 6th. Please come out and vote. Absolutely. Polls are open from 6 a.m. to 8 p.m. And please, folks, you know, let's equalize what's happening here in Hartford. And I want to work with Charity this November. And I want to work with Kevin. So thank you very much, Kevin. You're Thanks. Very welcome. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Good luck. Hello, I'm Charity Folk, Republican candidate for state representative in Simsbury. I'd now like to introduce my daughter Gretchen, who would like to say a few words about my candidacy. Hi, 
I'm Gretchen Folk, and my sister Nora and I are very proud of our mom, Charity Folk, and we want you to know why. As long as my sister and I can remember, our mom has been a role model to us, a true example of how to live a dedicated, principled, and organized life. Her energy and the care she shows for the people around her and the work and projects she undertakes are how she has always illustrated her ability to walk the walk. Growing up, we felt loved for, cared for, and safe. We believe her strength and independence reflects in both of us as we have gone off and made our own way. Throughout our lives, she demonstrated steadfast support from coaching our soccer teams when we were at elementary school at Squadron Line timekeeping at Y basketball games at Henry James, and attending every game possible through our high school sports careers. Our mom showed up and she was there. We had family dinner with our father all together almost every single night growing up. What seemed effortless to us then, we both now realize how skillfully she had managed her time and energy. Also, mom has always been very active in our community. She was responsible for making sure that we were safe walking to Squadron Line School by petitioning the neighbors and town hall to install the first school sidewalks in Simsbury. I remember her getting the support of almost every neighbor on our street by knocking on their doors and talking with each one. More recently, our mother's father, who we called OG, spent the last two years of his life at McLean Nursing Home. Her dedication to him made her a hero in our eyes. Mom lived closest to our grandfather at that time and visited him just about every day to be sure he felt connected to our family. I always felt that our aunt, uncle, and mother did such a good job providing the dignified transition to a caring facility that he deserved. We had our extended family at events at McLean, helping him feel connected to us, and we in return feel that connection to him. That has always been a big lesson to our mother passed on to us staying connected to family and those close to you, and loyally supporting the people around you. My mom announced to us last Thanksgiving that she was going to run for state representative in Simsbury and asked for our input. If you know our mom, as we do, it was the most natural decision and the perfect next step for her. We enthusiastically supported her decision from day one. Our mother cares deeply about the United States and always imparted that feeling onto us. Her commitment to her community and community service has been an example we all were raised to value. She is smart, honest, disciplined, and a true patriot. She feels passionate that the state of Connecticut needs to be more responsible in planning for the opportunities of future generations of residents. She has always had great common sense ideas, has proven she can work with many different people, and will work hard for Simsbury at the state legislature. We hope that you will support our mom in November as your state representative. I'm Charity Folk, and I approve this message.